What's up you guys, Nancy this here. Today's Wednesday, so we're going to be talking about dimensions, realities, realms, universes, and all things of that nature. Today we're going to the astral realm, and we might even be quantum jumping. Before we get into this video, I'm going to be featuring about a few TikTok videos in this video. So always show some love to TikTokers that I'm always featuring, because without them uploading, posting on TikTok, I wouldn't be able to use them in my video. So I'm so thankful for them. Thank you for posting on TikTok. I never said that before, so I just want to make sure I got that out in this video. So thank you, and also show me some love for making this video and putting them out there to you guys. So, I never asked object before, so we're going to listen to some stories of some people asking projecting since I will never have well not never but I don't want to ask subject because I'm kind of scared but I will probably never have an astral projection story to tell you guys so from time to time we will be listening to people's astral projection stories and I'm trying to make them all different so we get different viewpoints of astral projection but anyways I never astral projected right so let's watch a video of what I think astral projection is since I never did it astral projection is one of the most sacred things you can do you literally leave your body, attach to it with a silver cord, and travel the fourth dimension. It's a real experience, not like a dream at all. It feels realer than being awake right now because your soul is literally there. You can travel the universe and find the truth of everything. Think about all the stuff you could do legit though. You can visit family. You can even go back in time and see what stuff looked like in the past. You can go places that you're not allowed to go in the physical. You could go to different dimensions where rules are way different than what we are. You could go to space and go to different planets, visit civilizations, talk to beings like fairies and aliens. You can gain sacred and universal knowledge. Visit the Akashic Records, talk to your spirit guides and ascended masters. You can literally do anything. This is how you find the truth of everything. Okay, now we watch that video of the how I think astral projection works. Because remember, everything's from like my perspective, my viewpoint in these videos. Let's get another video to see what, like what's like the little rules in the astral realm. Because there should or could or would be rules, especially if like people like us are there. There probably are some rules. I'm playing. All right, let's get to this next video. There are some places you cannot go to in the astral plane. First one is Area 51. All projectors that have tried to go to Area 51, which we would all try, right? All of them have reported there being some sort of astral bubble, which doesn't allow them to go in it. Obviously, this is some form of higher technology, which is multidimensional. And we know this is a high likely chance to be true. One, because all astral projectors report this. And two, the CIA has already declassified documents saying that astral projection is real, so... Number two, you can't go to the moon. Extraterrestrials from across the galaxy use the moon as some sort of base in order to conduct their activities on. A lot of them just either observe or they study or they mine. It's reported that they actually hollowed it out. Apparently they weren't happy when NASA tried to land there and when astral projectors go there, they're thrown off with some sort of arm. It's clear they don't want people snooping their bases and they possibly could have some sort of agreement with the government because they've taken so much precautions to make sure people don't snoop in this thing. The third one is Neptune. For some reason we're told not to go there which is actually kind of stupid because now people are going to want to go there more. When you think about it our whole solar system is actually really strange because we're told not to go to certain planets and certain planets people go to and they see certain things like it's actually really creepy. If you're an astral projector my DMs are gladly open and get ready for part 2. Okay now that you watch that video you kind of see what I think you can do or where you can go and stuff like that right? Okay, let's watch this first story time where he breaks the rules only at 12. In an astral projection, what I did was I sent myself to Alaska. I said, it's so hot here. I want to just try something. I yeah, sent myself to, to, Alaska. to Alaska. And listen to me, I was there. Mm. I, when I came out of this thing, when I popped back in my body, and it's like a little pop, I, my skin was cold to the touch. Mm. And I knew I had touched on something really amazing. Now, I hadn't did it, I didn't do it for a long time after that, but the next time I was able to, to do it, I was actually a grown man by then. Mm. That particular time, I'm not gonna lie to you, I felt like I had a problem getting back in my body and finally found my way back and then I never tried it again because, uh, you know, right now I kinda like my body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't See, ready to float around forever. That, that used to happen, with, <laughs> I, like, you know, when you have sleep paralysis where yeah. You wake up before your body does. Yeah. And I believe that used to happen when I used to astral project. You understand yeah. me? My consciousness was there, but my body wasn't ready yet. Right. You understand? I used to hate that, right? Yeah. Wake up and you still can't move, yeah. right? Because you're in those in-between in states. 
and you're waiting for your consciousness or your soul, or whatever, to completely get back into your avatar, yeah. then you can take control. Right. Okay, now that we watched that second video, I don't like how you couldn't get back to his body, but um, I think that video was interesting, and I, I watched a lot of his videos. I think that um, he always has some interesting stories, and he's, like, involved in, like, these kind of topics that I do on my channel. So, definitely go watch his videos, because I like his videos, and if you're watching my video, you're probably going to like his videos, too. Anyways, let's get into this next video, where this story is, uh, this astral projection story is different and also scary. This is the story time of my last astral projection. A few things I want to preface before we get started. One, this is very existential shit that I'm talking about and have seen, so if you're not down for that, please don't watch. Two, so this was not an intentional astral projection. This was an astral projection in which I was shown something. Sidebar, this happens to me decently often where I'm pulled and shown something, and I'm now connecting the parts that I was shown in like my theory of reality, so I don't know what that means. But that being said, I know that there's lots of stuff in the astral, so take it with a grain of salt because I literally don't know what this means yet. But it was kind of freaky and I thought maybe you guys wanted to hear, so here we go. Okay, so when the astral projection starts, you start getting like a vibratory sensation all throughout your body, like on a soul level. So I started feeling that, I went into it, I like pulled out of my body and then I was like pulling back and I was going through the night sky, which is common for my astrals. For whatever reason, I was like, oh, let me pull back and like see more of this. And I kept pulling back and pulling back and pulling back until somehow I was like looking at Earth like here, like we were almost the same size, it seemed with the perception difference. But in that state, I was able to see more, like I used a wide angle lens here. What I saw was if Horton Hears a Who and The Hunger Games had a love child. That's what I was looking at. Because when I was able to zoom out further, I literally saw the Earth on top of like a platform. And it looked like a fucking movie set. And I'm positive it's the Earth that I had just come out of. Like the night sky above it was like a wallpaper backdrop that rotated and it just went and then it was like morning like it would merge into from night to morning the people that i saw were like average looking people normal looking humans and they had like cameras and booms and it was really just the most bizarre thing i've seen in a while um so again i don't really know what this means of course take it with a grain of salt but if anybody has any fucking ideas let me know because in my opinion of course so now you watch that video and you see how i think that video well you can kind of get why i would think that video is scary but if not i'm gonna explain it real quick so i thought that video was a little bit scary because she was like zooming zooming out right and for some reason even though i never actually objected i kind of understood what she was saying when she was like saying moving out anyways besides the point she um saw people recording earth even though that's not like new or anything because people say that Earth is under surveillance, all this stuff, like we're on a reality show, blah, blah, blah. I heard so many different conspiracy theories. I don't even want to. That's for a whole other video, and we will be doing a video on that. So, anyways, yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I believe her, though. Anyways, let's get to the next video. So, this next video. If you don't like crazy stories or diving down into a rabbit hole, keep scrolling. This video is not for you. But if you are, I'm going to tell you the crazy experience I had this morning when I tried to astral project. Now, lately, whenever I try to astral project, I end up just quantum leaping into an alternative timeline. I'm going to call them ATs for short here. Um, I jump into an AT and I explore. Usually when I go into an AT, I'm always curious as to what my this timeline's version of husband is doing in those timelines. So that's exactly what I did. I went searching for that guy. And I found him and I walked up to him and I introduced myself. I said, hello. And he, you know, exchanged quick pleasantries. And he asked me like, who are you? And I told him, I was like, you're never going to believe me if I told you. And he was like, he looked at me intrigued and he said, try me. Who are you? And I told him, I am from the year 2023. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking. You are not supposed to tell anybody the time that you are from. None of that. The gatekeepers don't like it. And that's exactly what happened. There were two gatekeepers nearby. They heard it. They gave me this shocked, crazy look of like, oh shit. 
And of course, they said something in their little ear speakers, walkie talkie things. And then they started coming towards me and tried to grab me so that they can clean up the timeline. And this is the first time that I've done this. Normally I run and get out of it. But this time I looked at them and I said, no, I am here for a reason and a purpose. Leave me alone. Go away. And they freaking did. What? I didn't know you could just command them to do that shit. Um, I did it one other time before. But I just thought that was like a fluke thing with that one gatekeeper. Uh, but anyways, so then I continued my conversation with him. And we sat down and I told him, I was like, in my timeline, you're my husband. I'm your wife. And then all of a sudden, my youngest son was sleeping in bed with me. So I felt him moving. And then I felt that energy starting to pull. And I started to like dematerialize in that time zone. And I told him, I can't stay. It's not, um, the energy is not stable, but I will be back. I will find you again. I quickly shot back into my body and then um, my son was still asleep. So I was like, okay, go back. So then I immediately, and a lot quicker than the first time, went back into the quantum jumping, went right back to that place and then found him again. It took me a minute. I had to walk around, um, but I found some people walking towards um, like this, this restaurant. So I walked towards that area and I found him. I saw his head and I shouted his name. And he was like, actually, my name is Doug. And I was like, your name is totally different than what it is in my timeline. But it was really fascinating. He gave me a hug when I saw him again. And I meant to ask him how much time had lapsed since the last time I had been there. But time ran out just like now. Now as you guys saw that next video, you got to see how, why I said we're going to be quantum jumping. So she did like a quantum jump into uh, some type of parallel universe to hers and she spoke to her husband and then she got like the what I would say what what could we call them I'm gonna like call them I don't even know what to call them they're like police in the spiritual world where they know you're not of this place I heard about that on some TikToks where it was like if you're sleeping you ask somebody to date and time and stuff like that I think she even mentioned that in her video yeah those type of people who do that the fact that she got them to like back up off her that was crazy so i wanted to add that story and with that some just story just because i thought that was crazy that she was able to do that and i believe her so i added that video to this story time because i believe in astral rejection even though i never done it myself i still believe these people that are in these video that i'm featuring in this video so let's get to the next story time what's up fam so right now i am going to give you guys a story time so hang with me okay so what we're gonna talk about is literally my first time in the astral space and <laughs> how i realized and how you can also realize if you are uh, instinctually spiritually protected as you enter the astral um so when i first started astral traveling guys i would travel straight to the fifth dimension and like the fifth dimension is dark honey it's like brightish but it's mostly like dark bright like it's dark right it's like the emptiness of space low-key and so um when i'm like hanging out there it's just like kind of like create whatever the fuck you want type energy right but if you fall into maybe like the fourth dimension it's more like the back end of like our human existence so like you could like walk around there's really like nobody there um except for like other spirits sometimes like you'll have like higher level entities that are there that are being ascended masters to the collective during a period of time or whatever right but now that humanity is kind of moving into the fourth dimension and into the fifth dimension a lot of this stuff is like shifting so but when i was doing it it was literally at the beginning of that so i was seeing like all types of shit right so then um I had just started working with Tehuti and he brought me into this space and in like the matrix are all like black top white bottom infinite in every direction right and he was like create whatever you want here and I was like wait what he was like you're just gonna come here and you create whatever you want here so I started doing that and I would just like play around I would like make cars and racetracks and like just weird stuff you know like early 20s you just kind of do whatever the fuck you think you know what would you want to do 
and I would just create all of this stuff in the astral. And then one day he came, I, he came there with me and he said, I want you to imagine a door. So I imagined a door and then the door appeared and I was like, bitch, what? So then I looked behind the door. There was nothing there. There was nothing in front of the door. There was nothing behind the door. And he says, walk in front of the door, knock on the door and then open it. So I knocked one, two, three. Then I twisted the knob. I opened it and it opened into a spatial dimension. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And he was like, we're going to explore the Akash. That was my first introduction to the Akash. I know a lot of people that like when y'all are alive, y'all asking me to read your Akash. Like I was introduced to the Akash by the person that is over the Akash. And that was my first time in the Akash. And probably for like three years, um, he taught me inside of the Akash how to work with others and how to uh, work with myself, get my shit. Okay, now that you watch this next story, you guys see how different all these stories are and how I try to add everybody's different viewpoints. I believe everybody in this video and I think that these stories are literally crazy. But not even crazy, but like mind blowing. I don't know how I would react. That's what I mean by crazy. Like I don't know what I would have did. But anyways, let's get into this next video because I'm kind of short on time. I was like, I have an hour and a half to fucking take a nap. I'm going to take a nap. I walked to the back of the of the ambulance. Yeah. And I laid down, I laid down on the on like the the stretcher, bro. No, it's mad. You know, that, hey, that's almost like laying down in a casket, my boy. Yeah, bro. Hey, at this point, I was asking for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening to myself tell this story, and yeah, I'm realizing that I, that was asking hey, for I it. I fucked up. I yeah, fucked I, up. I, I don't fucked up. So I see color pedo. I went to sleep. Boom, and out of nowhere, I woke up. Mm -hmm. I, I woke up, and I just remember. Fucking sitting up And I was like Fuck man I remember looking around And I was like Alright Ya estaba saliendo el sol And I was like Fuck man um, I, I look over to the To the To the front seats And my, my radio was right there yeah. I just remember looking at it I was like man I'm about to get a call I should probably get up And I just remember I got up And I did one of these And I just remember I stretched my My, my, my whole body yeah. And I looked down At my hands They weren't there My boy Casper Bro <laughs> Bro Check this shit out I was like, what the fuck? And I remember I did this. Like, literally held my hands up to my face. And I did this shit. And I couldn't see my hands. And I remember I, I did that. I was like, what the fuck? And uh, I just remember looking at my whole body. And eso, y que me volteo, bro. And I saw myself just fucking, bro. I'm, I'm getting chills, bro. Now stop. Yo, yeah. I literally, I turned around and I saw myself laying on that nah, fucking, fuck that, on, the, on, the, on that stretcher. I would have jumped right back in. Bro, Get no, no. In, check this, bro. So I was like, oh, what the fuck? Oh, I just like. I just remember freaking out. I was like, holy fuck. I was like, yo, did I, am I fucking dead? <laughs> did I done die? Took yeah, did I, did, die, did I just, boy? yeah, did I fucking die? Yeah. And con decirte that, like, I, 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 I turned around and I saw the doors to, to the, to the ambulance. I did one of this shit and my hand just went through. I was like, oh, fuck no, bro. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I just remember I started freaking the fuck out. I was like, holy shit, what the fuck is going on? My boy, Casper. Dude, I walked back to my body and I'm like, I, I try to like I, I me, me, me senté and I was like looking around and I'm like alright I'm gonna just try, try to lay down try to lay down in the same position that I was in yeah. and I kept doing that and standing up and no 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 Damn. and then I did that again no and then uno de esos my radio starts going off yeah like ALC ALC to 250 that was my number ALC to 250 I was like Oh fuck no, dude! In ese momento, like me cagué más, cause like yo, this job about to fire my ass, bro. I'm dead and I'm about to get fired. They're gonna discover bro, my that, body, bro. That, that boy, fuck it, my boy. Dude, no. I was like, oh fuck, bro. And like I tried to lay down and get up, and I, and I wouldn't. And you know this was, I finally did it again. I was like, oh my god, please. And I fucking, I laid down, and boom, I jumped up, and I did that shit. And I just remember, oh dude, I just got the fucking chills again. Um, and I just remember running over to my radio and be like, 250 ALC, like, show me a route. Because they were, like, trying to get me to, like, to fucking go pick somebody up. Like, somebody was waiting. Yeah. I was like, holy fuck, bro. But that is, that, that is by far the craziest one. Okay, now that you watch this next video, this video really freaked me out because I do not like not being able to come back into my body. Like, when I'm dreaming, sometimes I'll wake up immediately because I know I'm dreaming. Or sometimes I won't be able to wake up even though I know that I'm dreaming. And that always freaks me out because then I'm like, am I not dreaming? Like, what the heck? I thought I was dreaming. I'm not dreaming. I'm not waking up. Blah, 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 blah. 
so yeah i have that but i never stopped trying to wake up so i would have never stopped trying but it's just it's just something i would have thought about for months and probably would have had a hard time sleeping for months because i took a simple nap and then ended up after objecting not being able to get back into my body so yeah i wouldn't have been able to sleep for months probably I would have had a hard time sleeping for months or had anxiety going to bed, going to sleep, napping, anything, because you're just taking a nap. But anyways, as you guys can see, that video really freaks me out, and I'm very passionate about not being able to wake up or go back to my body. I do not like that. That is number one no-no for me. I, if I'm dreaming, and I know I'm dreaming, I want to wake up the minute I say it's time to wake up. And if I'm actually objecting, I want to go back into my body the minute I say I'm going to go back into my body. But anyways, that's why. This is one of the reasons why I would never ask reject. But anyways, let's hurry up and get to the next video. Hello. So this is the story time about the time I did astral projection. Now I did it only twice out my life, and um, so the first time I did it, it happened when I was like twelve or thirteen or something like that. It happened after I had my very first spiritual awakening. So what I did was. I just remember I had it set on my mind that I was going I was going to do this. I was going to astral project and I was going to see if it was real. So one night I had decided like okay, I'm going to astral project. So what I did was I laid in my bed. I worked on I worked on my breaths. I made sure that I was breathing in and out. I made sure that I had no negative thoughts, no fears. Any negative thoughts or any fears that crept up, I would breathe it out. And I would keep this going until my mind was clear. So then I had visualized an ocean. And I visualized a rope coming out the sky down to the ocean. And I would visualize me climbing, climbing, keep climbing. I would climb, I would climb, I would climb. Then all I know was that my body started vibrating but it was still still i was conscious of my body vibrating so then i kind of started panicking but then i feel like my higher self started talking to me and was like don't panic just keep going so that's what i did and then like all i knew is that my astral body had got separated from my physical body and i will never forget it i had a dresser in my room and on that dresser, I had a wig brush. Something told me, like, put the wig brush on the floor so you can know that it's real. So that's what my astral self had did. It put the wig brush on the floor. So then I looked over at my physical body and I started panicking. I don't remember if I was breathing or if I was still breathing or what. But I know I started panicking. I got scared. I started thinking that I was dead. Like, I really thought that I was dead because I'm just, I'm this it's like I'm this soul looking at my body, looking at my conscious body. So it scared me. So then something just was like, snap out of it. If you want to get back into your body, get back into your body. I think that was my higher self. So I just, I did just that. And um, when I woke up, it was morning time. And I looked over at the dresser and I saw the brush on the floor. So, it was a very, very brief experience, but that's how I knew astral projection was real. Let me know if y'all want to hear the second time I astral projected. Okay, so now that we watched this last story time, you guys see how diverse these, diverse these stories were. I put some regular, like more common stories in there just for you guys to see that there's like regular people having regular astral times in the realm. I don't even know but thank you so much for watching this video i hope you guys like this video and if you did give this video a comment a like tell me your astral projection story send me a video to send me a video in my dm or send me a video to the more life but at gmail so just put more life llc but put it at gmail send me a video to dm to something explaining your astral projection story because i would love to watch it so thank you